Today, today I'm gonna tell you guys how I got my job here in the Netherlands. My wife and I have been here almost four years now. And yeah, when we moved here, we didn't have jobs. For those of you who don't know, I work full time in corporate America here in Amsterdam. And more specifically, I've been working in this position for about close to three years now, working in entertainment. And that's what my career is in. My career is actually in television. And now my job here is fully remote, but I do like to go into the actual office in Amsterdam at least like twice a week. And now it is by far the best job I have ever had. I know I'm, I'm like extremely blessed and lucky that I have it. But I'm gonna be honest, it didn't have, I didn't get it overnight. I mean, I legit actually started working in television, I would say my second to last year of college. And that year, that was the year I picked up an internship for a show called 411 The Show in Atlanta. And after six months of interning, I then moved up to being a segment producer and the segment was called Check Please. And literally, I would go to restaurants, eat, and then if I liked the place, ask the manager or the owner if we can actually shoot and film there. And yeah, man, that's what I did. That was my job and I loved doing it. It was so fun. <laughs> and now after I got this experience, I started dabbling into just a ton of things in entertainment and with the plan of moving to LA right after I graduated. And I did, I graduated college. I ain't even walk, I just bounced. I mean, I legit packed up all my stuff Stuff, put it in a truck and drove all the way from Atlanta to LA by myself like a boss. I didn't I didn't have nothing lined up except for an apartment. Had that kind of lined up and then I just went hunting. I put myself out there until I got a job working for The Late Late Show with Craig Ferguson. And now it did start off as an internship, meaning I wasn't getting paid, but it was a great way to get in the door. And also it was on a CBS lot. That's where they filmed The Late Late Show with Craig Ferguson. I was a PA and then I worked my way up the next six months to being a researcher and PA. But again, even though it was paid, it was not full time. But I was in the door. Like I was in the studio almost every other day. So it was great. I talked to a lot of people, met a bunch of people. And I also around this time, I had actually made a YouTube channel and I made the first episode of a show called The Sky Is The Limit. My boss's wife from when I interned for the Late Late Show told me about a position that was coming up for on-air promo. So I got the interview and I personally think that what got me the job was literally making that first YouTube video. <laughs> I was in an interview with this guy named Rick and I told him I had a YouTube channel, I told him I made a couple of videos, showed him the first episode of The Sky's Limit and he liked it and next you know, I got hired. And now look, I'm gonna be real, it was not big timing or nothing like that, but it was exactly what I needed to like move forward and move up in the company. Because believe it or not, like yes, CBS is a major corporation in America. So it was a great start for me. Plus it offered benefits, it was full time, and they had a lot of creative positions that could be available for me for the future. So I had made it. I was in on air promo at CBS, like just killing it. I was working on shoots, I was editing promos, and I kept steadily working my way up. And now I do have to mention that around this time, me being at CBS, this was this was when like say me and my wife were traveling. We weren't even married yet, but we traveled everywhere. We went to Asia, we would go to Europe, we went to London, we went to Ireland, but we loved traveling. And every time we traveled, no joke, I would always just write and write and write on ways of how can we, how can we make this possible to actually stay? Meanwhile, at CBS, I was then introduced to a, a group called, what was this group called? And that's legit where I met a friend who wanted the same thing. She worked at CBS, she worked in CBS International, and her and I, every th every Thursday, we would have these meetups with our littles. We would talk about living abroad, like her and I, like for like five or 10 minutes. And man, one time I got so close. Cause remember I said I would work on shoots. Well, Matt LeBlanc was starring in a show that was called Man With A Plan. And now if you don't know Matt LeBlanc, Matt LeBlanc was Joey on Friends, but he was starring in Man With A Plan and we had a shoot with him. And I'm not even gonna lie. I get to this shoot, we're interviewing Matt LeBlanc and he was kind of like irritated, so I just, to break the ice, I just talked about Top Gear. I mean, I know we were there for Man With A Plan, but I was like, look, how do I get on Top Gear? I wanna move, look, me and my wife love it. We love being in London. How can we move to the UK and work on Top Gear? Matt LeBlanc actually gave me his email. He told me to email him to see if they had anything available. And yeah, they didn't have nothing available. <laughs> and now that was okay. Again, Matt LeBlanc was cool. He, yeah, he tried, couldn't do nothing. But almost simultaneously of me 
emailing Matt LeBlanc and talking about moving to London, my friend, Katie, the one that I would talk to all the time in Big Brother Big Sister program, she had got an offer from CBS in London. Come to find out, Katie then transferred from CBS International in London to CBS International in Amsterdam. All right, so I think we're gonna grab a coffee at this place right here. This is actually one of my other favorite spots in Harlem. It's called The Chocolate Company. It's boss people are nice. We're gonna grab a coffee and actually do some work at the same time. And I'm gonna get into, I, I gotta get into this rest of the story. <laughs> so I told her like, look, my wife and I are serious. I wanna make this happen. How can I make this happen? And she puts me in touch with HR at CBS International in Amsterdam. They did not have anything available for me right then, but I just kept in touch for the whole year. I was also working on this cut for a new show called FBI's Most Wanted for Upfronts. And if you don't know, Upfronts is this huge marketing presentation that all the TV networks go to in New York and present new shows. It's a big deal. And I was presenting FBI Most Wanted. I was told that it was gonna be used for some of the upfront presentation. And so I really went ham on this cut. I mean, I went in. Another reason why I went in on this cut was because someone had just got promoted from writer producer. I wanted that writer producer position with iLab. So I did that cut for them. They loved it, it was going great, but then you cannot write this next part because the vid hit and I did not get the position. But you know what, that is okay, these things happen because then I'm talking to Katie and then she tells me about another position that comes. That this girl was gonna take off I think nine months and they, they were looking for somebody. So we went ahead and moved. I did not have the job, didn't get the job, and then right when we moved here, that position came up and I got that position. And although that was my first job, it was a temp job, meaning that as soon as the person I was covering for came back, they had to decide whether they would renew my contract or not, and they didn't. So again, it wasn't like, it wasn't, a, it was my first job, but it wasn't the job job. And now basically what this temp job was, was literally me working in distribution. So other countries will buy rights to CBS shows and I was in charge of that communication. That's what it was. But I got extremely lucky because right after this, a recruiter reached out to me. I mean, during the time actually, before the contract was even up, a recruiter reached out to me for the current position I have now. And it's just so crazy how things work out. I mean, the moment that I got the experience working that temp job for nine months or maybe eight months, something like that, that's when the recruiter reached out because because they saw I was located in the Netherlands and that I've already was working with the company and I've already been with the company for 10 years. Plus the company had just did a merger. So that just opened up a ton more opportunities that were also here abroad and the recruiter reached out. Like what really got me was that my boss is actually located in Atlanta, Georgia. So that was so dope. So again, I do work in Amsterdam. Like I am legally working in Amsterdam, but again, corp I'm in corporate America. There are just so many companies that, there are so many American companies located here in the Netherlands. Nike, Netflix, Disney, Hulu. Like there, the list just goes on. I think it's because America and the Netherlands has like a really, really good relationship. And there's just so many American businesses here. Corporate America is here in the Netherlands. So I went ahead and interviewed for the job. Luckily got the job. It's amazing. I love the team. The whole team that I work with is all around the world so that we can work 24 seven without actually working 24 seven. And it just works out so well. Plus it is fully remote, which works out great for me and the kids. Like I get to see them when I can. I love the job. I'm not even joking. I love the job. Now, if I'm honest though, since we did not come here for a job, we came here just for quality of life and we moved here on our own, we do not get any of the benefits we would have gotten if we had transferred. So for example, if I had got the job at CBS and they transferred me here, that would have been a whole different story from what I'm in now. I mean, you get so many benefits. So I don't want nobody in the comments saying, oh, you're taking advantage of the system. Like, no, damn it, I moved here on my own dime with my own monies. Holla at a player pull up if you want some smoke. And now do I recommend doing this? I'm gonna be honest, no. I, I will say if you can transfer, transfer. But if you if you were disciplined and you have some savings and you like you got a bag on you and you wanna move abroad, I would say take the risk because I will be honest, 
I don't think I would have gotten these jobs if I was not here because from what I hear, when you want to transfer someone to another country, basically they're saying that no one in that country could do the job. I mean, that's what I got from HR when, I, when she explained it to me. So that's why I think it was much easier for me to get the position considering I had the skills, I've been with the company for a long time and I live here. So it was just a win-win and it worked out. And now there are other ways of coming here and finding a job here for example you can i've heard people finding jobs just coming here and getting settled through the DAF program i've actually heard people do it that way and to be honest that's actually a great way for americans to move to the netherlands through the DAF program in a sense of like all you really have to do is have a certain amount of money in your bank account and then make a business here and a business could literally be your youtube channel and now if you are unaware of this program it's called the dutch american friendship treaty and again pretty much all you have to do is move here start a business here a business could literally be your youtube channel i have a business here and yeah you are legally allowed to live and work here but yeah if you can find an american company that's here that you can transfer over for I think that will be the best way to go just because you get stupid tax benefits and it's just so much easier. Like basically they help you set up everything versus the way that I went. The route that me and my wife and my family took was we moved here on our own, completely on our own and we had to set up everything by ourselves. So that's just something that you gotta think of because I'm not gonna be, I'm gonna be honest. Like, yeah, it, it can be a bit difficult or frustrating. I would say, not, not even frustrating annoying. So now what if you want to go the exact same route I took and do what I did to get a job here? Well, there is one key factor that helped me out the most and I would have to say that is networking. I am being dead serious from talking to Matt LeBlanc about getting a job working at Top Gear UK all the way to talking with Katie and just keeping in touch with her. I highly recommend to network. I mean, I've gotten in touch with HR here before while I was living in LA and this was like, it had to be maybe a year and a half before I actually moved here. And I was always on the lookout for jobs. I was on the lookout for who I can reach out to. And I knew that this would have been the best route to go. So I networked hard. And if I was going the transfer route, I would legit focus on my skills and the language. I would really, really go hard in the paint on those. Because something that I learned from working in corporate America for so long is that if you offer a tremendous amount of value at a company, they will do their best to keep you and make you happy, even if that is transferring. So transfer, you have a higher possibility of getting approved for a transfer if you are very high valued. Also, something else that you can do is do some research and see what kind of connections that America has to the country that you're trying to go to. And also though, I'm gonna be honest, I, I really like the job I have now. I love doing what I do. Even though it is not creative, I still really, really enjoy What's it. What's so funny is that even though I'm not on the CBS side of things anymore, I still get to see Katie. Katie from LA who initially helped me get my shot of the temp job that I got. So I still get to see her. I also still get to see the girl that I covered for. And yeah, I really, really enjoyed the job. But yeah, that is how I got my first job here in the Netherlands. I hope you guys enjoyed it because I enjoyed making it. And also let me know what your first job was. My first actual job was working at a movie theater in Atlanta. <laughs> So I would love to know what your first job was. Also, let me know what you think is the best way of getting a job today. Because I know it's tough, man. I, I understand. So I would love to know how would you get a job today? But yeah, I think that is it. I'm actually getting my booty back to work. So I will see y'all in the next one. <laughs> Don't forget, it ain't over until we win. <laughs> Catch y'all in the next one.